Hello everyone, welcome to EduTap and also welcome to the 5 MCQs a day series and which is going on for our NABARD as well as IBPS AFO examination, right? And currently we are on day 27 as you can see and see. From today onwards we are going to cover the chapter that is fisheries, alright? So we have already covered most of the chapters before, right? And then we had a quick revision, we had uh, twice we have done previous year analysis uh, to adding two days each uh, giving two days each to uh, that right so uh, that is what we are going to do fishery so if, if you haven't watched the previous session in which we have covered previous year questions of both NABARD as well as IBPS AFO you can check them out and the link of it it is given in the description box below all right so now let's move ahead and yes before that to our new audience kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also join our telegram channel to get the PDF of every lecture that we provide here on YouTube right and yes this is 5 MCQs a day series that is going on for ARD static and we are here every Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays at 1 p.m. last uh, session I could not take I was not well apologies for that but now we are again back uh, we are back on track so let's start with question number one and that is the breeding rearing and transplantation of fish by artificial means is called hi Gaurav how are you so yes that is uh, see what we are going to do in this particular session we will do the basics of uh, this particular fisheries chapter all right and then we'll move ahead we'll also cover in next sessions we'll then cover what are the important uh, breeds and other aspects of that because now in Nobard also from this particular chapter uh, in-depth questions are now being asked from the last two cycles so that is why we are going to cover this particular chapter thoroughly so this is the basics for to make you understand what are the different terms that are associated with it so BL he says pisciculture is the right answer uh, and I'm waiting for other answer but as no one is giving for now so yes BL is correct that is pisciculture is the right answer to this and now we'll understand what are these different options that are mentioned here what does they mean so herein you can see see the first one here that is a PC culture all right so that is a PC culture that we study so what happens in this uh, basically we here in PC culture we focus only on fishes and that is why the term is PC culture we cultivate them in artificial environment what does artificial mean not in the natural rivers uh, where they live uh, wherever water bodies they live we cultivate them artificially and Ankush and uh, Ragul also said the correct answer very good next one that you can see here this is aquaculture all right so what happens in aquaculture we cultivate aqua means water so here we are talking about all the organisms that are present in water all right so this is the difference between pisciculture and aquaculture in fisheries we are solely focusing on the fishes while in aquaculture all organisms that are in fishes apart from that in aquaculture we can cultivate we can rear the or aquatic organism both in the natural environment only as you can see here we have made these clusters for uh, the cultivation or culture of the different organisms as well as we can rear them in the artificial environment also now this is mariculture and when we talk about mariculture you can say it is a subset of aquaculture and in this mariculture we focus on such uh, organic organism that are present in water uh, that are helpful for our food purpose for pharmaceuticals and etc all right for example here you can see this woman she is growing seaweeds all right so seaweeds here is also part of aquaculture but here in mariculture i hope now you understand the difference between aquaculture and mariculture in aquaculture we are rearing the organisms while in mariculture which is a subset of aquaculture we are focusing on specific sections which we can derive the profit we can derive from the aquaculture all right so uh, yeah last one Gaurav also said the right answer of the last one now let's move ahead to question number two and it says deep sea organisms generally inhabit which of the following zones as per ocean zones classification in when we were doing our agro meteorology chapter right in that also we studied about different zone classification that has been given by different uh, organizations right so similarly for uh, oceans also we have different zones here in as you can see so you have to tell that among the following which one is generally uh, wherein 
we talking about the deep sea organisms all right so you have to tell that see here in uh, there are different zones according to what the what is the depth of the ocean or the water bodies wherein the organism here specifically we are talking about ocean because this is ocean zone classification wherein different organisms that live in water they exist uh, oceans specifically so now bl he says that d is the correct answer of the following and uh, it's really great to know that you all know yes option d is the correct answer that is a and b see when we talk about uh, bathypelagic uh, zone so here in the uh, range it is somewhere around 1000 to 3000 all right then when we talk about abbey then it becomes 4000 we are talking about kilometer over here and then 4000 to 6000 somewhere around that and then in meso felix it is around 200 meter to 1000 all right so here sorry here we are talking about meters right so here in 200 to 1000 meters so this is the range here in that we are talking about and in this you can assume that there is light penetration to some extent right sunlight penetration and in this the bel these belongs to the deep sea organisms all right so i hope that is clear and here in gorav and sheila also said the correct answer that was the option number d very good you all all right next let's move to question number 3 but before that even if you are preparing for af4 we have courses for nabard as well we has we have courses for af4 as well and uh, here in we have two type of courses for you in course 1 you will have all the detailed videos notes worksheets summary sheets and quizzes after every chapter for better understanding you would get monthly current affair magazines which are very important for your phase 2 as well as interview you would have important schemes related uh, uh, one book or you can say e book or magazine that would cover all the agriculture related schemes and you would also have test series in this in test in course 2 you will have just mock test that would help to prepare for your examination all right now let's move to question number 3 which says which of the following riverine system so where we are talking about rivers here you must focus the term riverine right so in india falls under the category of peninsular river system so there are two type of system that exist all right that we will study when we will uh, understand the explanation of this so but before that you have to tell that which of the following exi exist in that peninsular river system all right so you have the following option that is ganges hindu indus brahmaputra east coast and none of the above and hi gyanendra uh tell the answer quickly so see the correct answer over here it is option number d that is east coast right so see what happened there are two type of riverine system we are talking about river here so uh, there are two type of system that exist and these are himalayan rivers and this is second is a peninsular region see so india at downwards it looks something like this right so this is the peninsular region so there are two types of river above the himalayas from their river uh, in that area from uh, river originates and they flow so these are the himalayan river system and peninsular which flows in the south down south of india all right so these are the peninsular so in south, in the north the himalayan system these ganges indus brahmaputra these belong to the Indo, uh, himalayan river system while in peninsular we have all the rivers that are in east coast and west coast for example kaveri for example godavari right so these are the examples of peninsular system here uh, gyanendra said the correct answer of this particular question now let's move and see these are the basics of this chapter this is you can say introduction of fisheries and it has become quite important for nabard as well from two cycles onward and of course it is uh, important from afo because in afo everything is in depth now let's come to question number 4 which is what is the salinity range of brackish water that the brackish fish can tolerate so what is a brackish water let's first understand all right so here in brackish water is the type of water wherein there is some saltiness present but that is not as much as that is find in oceans all right so it is somewhat uh, salty but not these are somewhere you can say brackish water is somewhere between the fresh water and uh, the oceans or the salty water where exist all right so brackish water they are in between for example estuaries they are the best example so these are made when from fresh water uh, some house ocean water it get mixed uh, so it can happen in peninsular region a lot right because here in the fresh water exist and then you have salty water alongside it right so uh, you have to tell that the 
फिशेज द ब्रैकेश फिश विच लिव इन सच टाइप ऑफ वाटर सो हाउ मच दे कैन टॉलरेट ऑल राइट सो वी हैव शुभम ही सेट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव टू थर्टी ज्ञानेन्द्र से सी बी एल सेज ए गौरव सेज ए प्रदीप से जे ज्ञानेन्द्र से इज अगेन ही करेक्टेड हिम येस द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर ए जीरो पॉइंट फाइव टू थर्टी हेयर पी पी टी इज पार्ट्स पर थाउजेंड ऑल राइट सो दिस इज द यूनिट दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हेयर एंड येस दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दैट for that all right so yes uh, the 30 ppt that was for marine but here we are talking about the brackish fishes all right so let's move and yes this is i have inculcated one picture over here so this is the estuary that i was talking about so these look something like this and this is a mixture of uh, the oceanic water and the fresh water now let's come to the question number 5 that is the last question of today that which of the following is or are a major indian carp all right so here in we are learning about the different species of carp all right so you have to tell me the correct answer to this so that we can move ahead so katla rohu mrigal uh, these are some common fishes that are found in india but are these carp or not or which one of them is carp you that you have to tell me all right so here in agriculture scheme c says option number d and then we have bl he says d shubham all of these gyanendra all and they have mohsin pradeep rahul vikram sheela all said d all of the above very good yes and here to maybe to confuse you or maybe to make your confusion clear i have added all the three fishes major these are the major carps of india all right so here in the first one that is the katla because see all three are carps that is why they are looking similar all right so here is the katla this is the rohu and this is the mrigal okay so these are the three types but you can see there is some difference you can see its body shape kind of different and it's quite shiny right so this these are the three major carps that exist in india and you should be aware of that and among them if asked about uh, if you have to select one so you will select the katla means if uh, in the following options you have katla written over here and you have to choose only one then uh, the major carp you will select will be katla all right so yeah that is all for today and these are the toppers of the last session in which asked are you asked you about the major command area what is the uh, area of the major uh, command area right so ranjini said the correct answer and she, uh, she also gave additional information about medium and minor and do mind this medium and minor have been asked in your examination in previous year so that is why it is very important and very good and then we have abhinav bhat he also said the correct answer as well as he also Uh, gave one formula very good for the additional information here in is talking about uh, cultivable command area is uh, is equal to gross command area minus uncultivable area so what is this gross command area it is assumed uh, the the gross command area is assumed to be a land wherein you can irrigate without considering how much water do you have so this gross command area you can simply assume that if you have in finite supply of irrigation you can cover the whole area but then if you minus them because you cannot grow everything in every land right some of the land it uh, has it is um, uncultivable so that is why whatever it is uncultivable area where you cannot grow crops so there is no use of irrigation doing irrigation there right so that if we minus that area we get the cultivable command area so very good for that ayush said the correct answer and she also gave about informational additional information about medium and minor very good that is the correct answer then bl also said the correct answer with additional informations uh, vikram bali said the correct answer we have gaurav who said the correct answer and additional information about the money allocation we have janani she said the correct answer very good and yeah that is all for today and the homework that you have for today is how many biodiversity hotspots are there in india these are some random questions that are asked in your examination and you should be aware of that that how many biodiversity hotspots there are uh, here in india especially when the world it is focusing on climate change and you can expect questions from that as well all right so yeah that is all for today i hope you enjoyed the session and i hope it was fruitful for you all if you have any queries you can comment down below i'll definitely reply and now for some few more days we are going to cover this particular chapter and we'll do a 